Hey guys, it's Julie Spencer, author of the Bucks and Peak series, and we are almost to the end of Bucks and Peak book two, center stage. And we're just starting into chapter 12, which is called Driving Me Crazy. Megan, a shy voice, brought Megan out of her daydreams. She looked up from her textbook at the girl who had been their waitress the previous weekend. It was the last class before final exams, and they would be reviewing the whole semester's material one more time. Megan reached over and moved her backpack from the seat beside her. Hi, Teresa. I wanted to thank you again for your generosity Friday night. Teresa tentatively lowered herself into the chair. Megan was unsure what she meant. She was not aware that she had done anything special for her classmate. The look on her face must have urged Teresa to add a qualifier. Your husband's tip was unexpected. What did he do? Megan had been trying not to get caught up in the overwhelming amount of money Ian was always throwing around, so she tried to ignore most of it. <clears throat> he left a 100% tip. It was over $240. You're kidding, Megan gulped. She'd known he was generous, but that was a little over the top. That was the most money I've ever made in one night. Teresa giggled and hunched her shoulders. Guess I'm really glad I didn't pass out. Me too, Megan laughed. It was a fun evening. It's so great to finally be able to go out in public together. Can't tell you how hard it was keeping him a secret all that time. You're a really lucky girl, Teresa acknowledged. Not for the reasons you think, though, Megan sighed. He's so much more than the rock star the world sees. He keeps me laughing a lot. I could see that. It was nice. There's, it was fun to get to know all of you. Teresa shifted in her seat and pulled notebooks and pens from her backpack. It's been kind of neat to be a CMU student this semester because of all the publicity. It's not every day that a famous person sits next to you in biology class. I'm only famous because my husband is. Megan waved her hand dismissively and grinned over at Teresa. I'll be infamous if I don't pass this exam, so I'd better pay attention. The professor was about to start class, so they both turned forward and opened their lab notes. Megan smiled at her new friend, wishing she'd taken the time earlier in the year to get to know her. Photographs and videos, Ian flipped through the television channels as he waited for Megan to finish getting ready for bed. Why do people document their whole lives and share them on social media? What makes you ask that? Megan set aside her hairbrush, the hairbrush she was using to get the tangles out before twisting her long hair in a quick sloppy braid. Seems like every commercial shows someone taking an image or they're marketing the latest phone by telling us it has a better camera than their competitor and every news story involves an amateur video that someone captured. If I send a tweet, it gets shared thousands of times by people all over the world. I just don't get it. I never see you taking pictures or sending tweets. I didn't even know you had a Twitter account. Well, I document a lot of funny things while on tour because that's what the fans want to see. He shrugged. But up until recently, I haven't been able to share anything about our lives because I've had to keep you a secret. <laughs> Show me your social media sites. She hopped onto the bed and handed him his tablet. I want to see you on tour. Well, we have one big Facebook site for the whole band that Jeremy has some, one of our managers update. I don't know. We have people for that. Ian waved his hand dismissively. But we each have our own Twitter and Instagram accounts. As he was talking, he opened a browser and pulled up the band's Facebook account. Oh my gosh, Ian, Megan's jaw dropped. You have over 38 million followers. As for the whole band, though, I don't personally have that many followers, Ian scoffed. According to Rhonda, you are the band, Megan bumped his shoulder. I don't think the other guys would agree with that, Ian said. Here, see, on Twitter, I only have 22 million followers. Only 22? She feigned disgust. You're not all that popular, are you? Seeing it from Megan's perspective, Ian realized that really was a lot of people. I haven't even sent out a tweet in weeks. Not since the last day of our tour right before going on stage. <laughs> Thank you for all your support, Megan read aloud. European tour was great. Heading home to America to be with my Megan. She looked over at him and put her hand over her heart. Guess that tells you what was on my mind that day. Ian looked up at her sheepishly. Your most recent tweet was about me. My every thought is about you, Ian said. That's so sweet, Ian. You know, since I don't have to keep you a secret anymore, I should post an image with you. 
Ian wiggled his eyebrows up and down playfully. He held his arm open. Come here, we'll take a photograph together and post it on Twitter. See how many people like it and retweet it. You have to put a shirt on first. Megan reached over to the side of the bed and tossed Ian the white shirt he'd had on earlier in the day. <clears throat> he put it on without even buttoning it and pulled her over to him. With one arm wrapped around Megan, Ian reached out with a camera phone to snap a picture together. It was a casual photo with a soft smile on Megan's face and Ian's usual crooked, flirtatious grin. He looked like he was holding the greatest treasure in the world and she looked like she loved being in his arms. Glad to be home with my Megan, he typed. My watch finally reads the correct time. You're so silly, Megan teased him and leaned over for a kiss. Ian hit tweet, and the photo flew off into the social media world for all to see. Probably shouldn't take any more photos for the rest of the night, though. Might get us into a lot of trouble if we did, he agreed, set the phone aside, and pulled her down into, onto the pillows. They would probably be inappropriate. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> That's a relatively provocative picture, Eileen suggested. She looked up at the large screen behind them, and Megan just about wanted to crawl under the sofa. She still couldn't believe she had allowed that to post on Twitter. They'd heard so many jabs about it from friends and family, and the comments on social media were just as colorful. Some people teased them about taking half-naked photos of themselves in bed because Ian's shirt had been unbuttoned. Some comments had girls asking Ian to take his shirt back off before he took his next photo of himself in bed. And some people compared how attractive Ian was next to his comparatively boring wife. And here now, Eileen was sharing it, on, sharing it again on her talk show. Oh my gosh, you have got to take that down. Megan had long since stopped apologizing about it, so she laughed along with the comedian. Ian just sat there grinning with his arm around his wife, completely unapologetic. And Kai reached over and offered him a fist bump and a knowing look. What did Ian mean about his watch being the correct time? Eileen asked. When we first met, he set his watch to Eastern time, so while he was on tour, he'd always know what time it was in Michigan, Megan said. Now that he's here, his watch is correct. How about this picture? The next screen showed Megan on stage in Copenhagen, wearing that beautiful dress and strappy heels with her hair and makeup done. <coughs> Much better, Megan nodded and smiled. The audience cheered, and Ian wrapped both arms around his wife. I like the other one better. She's so naturally beautiful with all that makeup. You gotta admit, though, Kai interjected, she looked really hot in that dress. Rhonda reached over and smacked him lightly on the knee, and Kai turned so his arm was protectively around her shoulders in apology, but kept the grin on his face. Personally, I'm proud of you for being willing to let him take a photo of you without makeup on. The audience applauded as Eileen continued. Not every woman would be willing to do that. I wasn't wearing makeup when he met me, and he liked me anyway, Megan said. He knew what he was getting himself into. Besides, I try not to care what other people think. It bothered me at first when people didn't think I was pretty enough for him, but he must like me for more than my looks, so that's good. That brought more applause. Congratulations on your recent graduation, by the way. Megan nodded shyly. Thank you. Did you attend her graduation? Eileen looked over at Ian. I snuck in at the last minute, stayed way up in the shadows. Ian reached over and mussed Megan's hair. I wanted to keep the focus on my girl here. I'm in the spotlight enough as it is. That was her day, not mine. That was a nice gesture. Eileen looked back and forth between Ian and Kai. So what's next for all of you? I think we're all planning to stay right here, where we are until after the baby comes. Ian turned to Kai and Rhonda. When's your due date? Eileen asked, as if she didn't already have it written on her cue cards. October 1st, Rhonda answered. So you guys had a fun New Year's Eve party. That brought laughter from the audience, and Kai proudly nodded his head. Rhonda covered her face with her hands in embarrassment. You four, you four sort of pulled a fast one on the world over your Christmas break, didn't you? All a diversion tactic, Kai agreed. Personally, I think I ended up greatly benefiting from the deal. We can see that, Eileen once again pointed to Rhonda's growing baby bump. That brought more laughter from the audience. And you know that you're having a boy, is that correct? Have you picked out a name yet? Yes, we have, Kai puffed his chest out, and no, we aren't going to tell you. That brought booze from the audience. 
Well, other than baby news, Eileen changed the subject, what the audience really wants to know is, what's next for Buxton Peak? Kai and Ian looked over at one another. Megan knew they were wondering that themselves. That's a good question. Ian scratched his head and shifted in his seat. I just wanted to get home to my wife after our last show, so we didn't nail down any details of our next tour dates, and now Kai gets to be a dad in a few months. We'll figure out what to do after that. We heard there was an argument between the band members. Does that mean you're officially breaking up? Way to be blunt, Eileen, Ian snickered. Yes, there were a few heated arguments, but that's normal for brothers. I'm sure we can work through it. There are also rumors that Gary and Andy are both in rehab, Eileen said. Your guess is as good as mine, Ian responded elusively. I've been a little distracted the past few months. With that, he pulled Megan closer into his arms and grinned. Understandably, Eileen agreed. I think we're all enjoying a much-needed holiday, Kai added. We'll catch up in a few months and go from there. Well, thank you for joining us on the show, Eileen said. We'll be back after the commercial break. The audience applauded as Eileen reached out to shake each of their hands. Kai is cheating on me, Rhonda barged into Megan and Ian's kitchen. I just know it. What on earth makes you think that? Megan looked up from the cookbook she was studying as Ian walked in from the next room. Rhonda paced back and forth across the kitchen floor. He disappears for hours at a time, and when I ask him where he was, he says he was hanging out with Ian. Rhonda paused and waved her arm in his direction. Well, I know darn well he isn't with you because you've been in the backyard playing that million dollar guitar and staring out at the stupid cornfields. Just a few minutes ago, Kai took off, walked down the road and got into the passenger seat of a car I didn't recognize. What am I supposed to think? That does sound suspicious, Megan agreed, but there has to be some reasonable explanation for it. Rhonda sat down in a chair and let herself break down, releasing the pent-up frustration that she'd been feeling for the past few weeks. Ian and Megan just looked at one another, not sure what to do. He couldn't possibly be cheating on you. I'd know it if something were up. Did you know that he's been sneaking away? Rhonda asked. No, Ian shrugged his shoulders. Do you know whose car he just got in? Rhonda pointed out the window. No, I don't. Ian felt bad that he didn't have an answer. He thought Kai had gotten over his tendency to hop from one girl to the next. He thought settling down with a baby on the way would have changed him. He wished he could grab Kai and knock some sense into him. Instead, he grabbed his cell phone and stormed out of the house. Kai's phone went straight to voicemail, so Ian left a rude message. Where on bloody earth are you, and why is your girlfriend crying in my kitchen? I hope you have a very good explanation, and so help me, if you are cheating on her, I'm going to smack you upside the head so hard you're going to wish you only had Gary to fight. I'd suggest you get your sorry rear end back here and deal with this. Ian felt like throwing something and didn't want to go back in the house, so he paced on the front porch for an hour, till finally his phone began to vibrate and he picked it up to see Kai was calling. Where are you? Ian demanded without any pleasantries. Pal, what the heck? Kai responded in defense. Why would you think I was cheating on Rhonda, and why is she crying? You tell me. Where have you been sneaking off to? Whose car did you get in? Kai started laughing. That just made Ian more angry. What could possibly be funny? There is a very good explanation, and I'll be home in about ten minutes. Tell the girls that I have some good news, and they should wait for me on the front porch. With that, Kai hung up, still chuckling. Now Ian added confusion to his list of frustrating emotions. He pulled the screen door open and relayed Kai's message. Rhonda had long since finished crying, but her anger had barely diminished. She pushed past Ian and stood on the porch with her arms crossed and a scowl on her face. Finally, Kai pulled into the driveway in the same mysterious car, but was no longer in the passenger seat. He was driving. The man in the passenger seat was older and heavier set with a patient expression and a clipboard in his hands. Kai put the car in park, spoke to the man for a moment more, shook his hand and climbed out of the car. The man came around to get into the driver's seat. Kai's sheepish expression did little to calm Rhonda's frustration. Only two more lessons and I should have my learner's permit. A tiny smile turned the corner of Kai's cheeks. You've been taking driving lessons? Why didn't you tell me? It was supposed to be a surprise. 
Kai walked up several steps, but stopped when he was eye level and invited her into his arms. She let him pull her forward, and he put both hands on her belly. You aren't going to be able to drive after the baby comes, and I wanted to be able to help out. I'm sorry it caused you to worry. Rhonda realized she was being silly and allowed herself to smile down at him. You're not cheating on me? I could never do that. Kai pulled her all the way into his arms. I told you a few months ago, you and baby Sean are everything to me. I'm sorry I made you upset. I'm sorry I'm so emotional. Rhonda pouted. She rested her hands on his arms and he held her and looked up into her eyes. I really am glad you're home. I love you. From his repentant smile, Rhonda could tell Kai meant it, and she wrapped her arms all the way around him with a contented sigh. Baby Sean kicked, and Kai pulled away and laughed. He put his hands back on her belly. You're glad Daddy's home too, aren't you, little guy? Are you excited to be a dad? Rhonda was already sure of the answer. I'm scared out of my wits, he admitted. But yes, I'm excited. Me too. It's going to be a big change. A good change. Kai kissed her one more time before they headed inside. That is the end of chapter 12. And I hope that if you liked this video that you will give it a thumbs up and like and that you'll share it on social media so that we can share these videos with all kinds of people. So next time we will start into chapter 13, which is called Baby Blues. Cool. See you guys in a few minutes.